Hello, crypto boys and ghouls, and welcome back to the channel, Tales from the Cryptmancer, where we feature content on play to earn games on the blockchain, such as Splinterlands. And in today's video, I have a clip from last night's Splinterlands TV stream, where we specifically went through and did some Rift Watcher strategy analysis, comparing two hypothetical scenarios that I think will be very interesting for the audience to understand kind of the thought process that goes into, for example, deciding on yield strategies for decision points in this game, such as purchasing Rift Watchers, you know, purchasing nodes, purchasing tower defense, etc. So I think it's timely because the Rift Watcher presale is right around the corner and, uh, you know, this is a good exercise to look at how you could also model a similar ex exercise for yourself and your personal situation. Uh, I will say that there is a lot of detail that we cover in this next clip, so definitely pay attention. Um, there are a lot of numbers that we go through to make up the data, but hopefully uh, the process and the numbers make sense and they're easy to under understand. And I hope the clip is informational and beneficial for you. And until next time, keep stacking those stats. As I want to talk about a Riff Watcher strategy analysis, and what I wanted to do was look at different hypothetical scenarios to analyze and compare to understand how we could plan for Riff Watchers. And Riff Watchers is just a few days away from a pre-sale perspective. And really the decision is, you know, are, you know, as a player, do you want to go in and do a Rift Watcher buy or don't you? And it's kind of like black or white. It's either, either you do or you don't. Um, and here's a scenario. Now it's not going to be the same scenario for everyone. I had to use a, a, a price point to get the data to work with. So this scenario may not be applicable to you. Like if you were going to buy, 10, 10 Rift Watcher packs, as an example. Well, the option to buy a node as an alternative isn't going to be available to you. But, you know, maybe that those 10 Rift Watcher packs in, instead you evaluate, you know, would tower defense be better or would chaos packs be better? So the point is to get you thinking about the data and understanding your plan on how you're going to approach Rift, Rift Watchers. So in these two scenarios that we're going to analyze and compare tonight, the first scenario is we're going to buy a thousand Rift Watcher packs in the pre-sale. And the second scenario that we're going to look at is what would happen if instead we took that same money and capital and bought three nodes to passively acquire Rift Watcher cards over time. Now we have a couple of assumptions that we're going to use for these scenarios just to make things easy. And obviously everyone's situation will be different. But the assumptions we're going to use for today's analysis and data is that we're going to use external fiat for funding both of these hypothetical scenarios and that bonus packs don't count for airdrop purposes you know if they do count for airdrop purposes it would give some additional value to the pre-sale as an example but we don't know that yet for sure uh, regular airdrops we're going to guess that they start at 200 packs so the first airdrop that comes in at 500,000. I think it's it uh, 500,000. Let's just say it takes 200 Rift Watcher packs to unlock one of those guaranteed airdrops. We don't know that yet for sure, but let's just use that as the figure. And that we have 3,410 licensed nodes sold for these calculations for the node reward pools. And that the current uh, token prices for all the data is SPS at 0.074 cents and vouchers at 0.875 cents. If we can agree, on all of this as assumptions, we can proceed with the analysis. So if we were to buy a thousand Riff Watcher packs outside of a group buy and just buy them ourselves, we would be eligible for 150 bonus packs with vouchers, right? And we would have to pay $5,000 in SPS to get those thousand Riff Watcher packs. And we would have to provide 1,150 vouchers at the time of the presale, which would be another $1,006, which means our total cost to buy 1,150 Rift Watcher packs 
would be $6,006. Now, what we can do is we can calculate some of the value that we would receive coming out of the pre-sale and we can see what that amount is because that helps us understand you know, if we wanted to flip the Rift Watcher assets, what would be our break-even point? Now we have to make some assumptions here again, so walk with me here. Assuming the assumptions below, we would actually receive $1,870 in value received from the pre-sale purchase, right? Outside of the pre-sale, we wouldn't get this value. So we're gonna say we would get one watcher title for a thousand packs, which means let's say that would be $200 in value. We would get one guaranteed gold foil promo card, which would be $300 an estimated value. And we would get 19 regular foil promo cards, which we're gonna estimate the value being roughly Dr. Blight. So roughly $70 each. So that value is $1,330. Now we could get more than 19 gold or regular foil promo cards. We're just gonna assume we don't get lucky and we just get the guaranteed drops. And then we'll just assume also for the time purposes of a flip that we're gonna get five of the regular foil first airdrop cards. And we're gonna value those at roughly $8 each based on Chaos Legion airdrops. So this is where we get the $870 pre-sale value that we're going to receive back on our $6,006 total cost of Rift Watchers. And what that tells us is we would need to achieve $4,136 in value back from any flipping we would do if we wanted to break even on the purchase meaning we, we saw value in all of those pre-sales assets and we just wanted to you know, flip packs or on Hive Engine or cards in the individual market to try and recoup our cost, right? That would mean we would need to resell our Rift Watcher packs on Hive Engine for $3.60 or more, or we would need to get roughly $3.60 plus 5% for the market fees in individual card sales if we flip those individual cards. Now, an ideal scenario for us would be potentially, let's say we just wanted to keep a max level Osure for our deck, so the promo card, right? So that would be $770 worth of value, and we wanted to keep the Watcher title because, hey, titles are cool, right? So, and we wanted to keep all subsequent Riff Watcher airdrops. So if we tried to keep the title, the subsequent airdrops, and a max level oh sure, and we sold all the extra assets from the pre-sale, the gold foil, and the extra regular foil promo cards for $860, uh, what it means is we would then have to flip the 1,150 Rift Watcher packs or the individual cards for $4.47 each on Hive Engine, or sell the singles on the market for $5,397.53. If you could manage that, if you could make those price points work for you, you would be able to, with that $6,000, get all of your money back and have, at the end of the day, a free Max Osher promo card, a free title, and many free Rift Watcher airdrops. Now, that's the ideal scenario if you could do that. We don't know how much the Rift Watcher packs will sell in Hive Engine for, but that's a gamble that you might be willing to take. And that's why I have it here as kind of the hare, the rabbit here, as the scenario icon for this scenario, because you're betting that you can go in and get this kind of value, $4.47, and either in cards or in packs off Hive Engine, you know, uh, within the first, let's say, 24 to 48 hours of Rift Watchers hitting from those that aren't buying packs or cards necessarily. And if you can get that value, you could do really well. Like I said, you could have this kind of a value, max promo card, a title, and Rift Watcher airdrops, if you could get $4.47 off of roughly a $6 pack. So that's the ideal scenario. We saw before what the break-even scenario was. It was roughly $3.60 a pack. But let's look at scenario two. Sorry. Let me talk about some of the disadvantages before we look at scenario two. Disadvantages or risks of this scenario. The Osure promo card value is closer to Mycelia, let's say $20, rather than Blight, which is $70. 
if the promo card comes in and the market says it's not blight level and they value it like a cat the top chaos legion promo card then obviously all these data points are skewed and not accurate and it makes it very hard to break even or certainly make a profit on your six thousand dollar investment um, the other risk or the disadvantage here is that Rift Watcher packs sell in Hive Engine for closer to current Chaos Legion pack prices, which means less than 50% of the retail price, which based on a uh, voucher plus a $5 SPS price pack, that means if Rift Watcher packs sell for $2.94 or less on Hive Engine, well, you're not going to break even and you're not going to make profit on this move. And, you know, the risk is if you don't get first mover pricing for your packs and cards, if you, you know, don't sell because your things aren't priced appropriately and it takes a week or two weeks or a month to sell, well, then all bets are off because your prices could be even worse at that point in time. Again, this is from an investment perspective. If you're just buying Rift Watcher packs to get the cards and to create, you know, a deck of Rift Watcher cards to play with, then this is not relevant to you. Just buy the cards either on the market or in the packs and you're good. But this is again, talking about how do we maximize yields within the game and how do we maximize opportunity costs? So the next scenario, right? This is the tortoise scenario. The hypothetical scenario here is if we buy three nodes and we passively acquire the Rift Watcher cards over time with the nodes uh, reward pools. So the cost for three nodes would be $4,500 in SPS and 1,500 vouchers. Uh, the voucher cost for 1,500 vouchers would be $1,312.50, which means the cost, if you wanted to go with a node scenario here, would be $5,812.50, which is a little bit less than the cost of buying 1,150 Rift Watcher packs. Now, the first month of earnings, so the first 30 days, um, what you're going to get uh, with these three nodes you're going to earn 5.86 about 865 vouchers per day which is 527.86 total vouchers in the first month which has a value of 461 dollars and 88 cents you're also going to earn starting probably tuesday here with sps nodes being uh, sps rewards being dropped through the nodes 989.74 sps per month which is 2,969.22 total SPS per month in the first month, which is roughly valued at $219.72 at current SPS prices. So your total earnings in the first month at current token prices for these three nodes that you would purchase would be $681.60. So what does that mean? It means in the first month of Rift Watcher release, Instead of scenario A, where we bought 1150 Rift Watcher packs, we would be able to buy nine BCX of Osher promo card at $70 per BCX for a total cost of $630. And we'd have $51.60 left over for other miscellaneous Rift Watcher card purchases. And then every month after the first month, we would have roughly $681.60 to continue to free roll into Rift Watcher card purchases, whether they be Osher's or whatever card you want in the Rift Watcher set. And that would go for a period of time, right? And pretty much indefinitely for the next four or five years. Um, so what are the benefits of this particular scenario? Well, in this particular scenario, by the end of 2022, so in the next three months, you would be able to purchase a total of $2,044.80 of Rift Watcher card singles for free just by holding your node. So roughly 34% of the Scenario A's uh, pack purchase amount you would get for free just by having nodes, but you have to be more patient because you wouldn't get those day one. You would get roughly 33% or 34% of those Rift Watcher card value in the next three months. Uh, you would also gain any appreciation of node value. For example, if Tranche 1 sells out and it goes to Tranche 2, well, now your node is more valuable that you own. Also, um, remember, Rift Watcher packs or cards don't provide any airdrops or inherent earning potential other than the SPS they can help you earn in the game through winning battles, which means in scenario A, once you buy those packs, unless you, again, resell those packs for profit, they're just holding. Uh, you're holding the cards or you're holding the packs, and they're not 
getting you any yields. They're not getting you any advantage in the game. So you have opportunity cost by holding those. Additionally, the benefit is you'll be able to dollar cost average into Rift Watchers. And that's assuming that the Rift Watcher card prices decline over time, similar to Cast Legion as an example. And you would potentially have the option as an alternative to dollar cost average into any future Chaos Legion legendary summoners that are airdropped. So the water summoner, uh, what the death summoner, the dragon summoner, etc. So because you'd have this extra uh, $681.60 uh, every month that you'd be able to then divert to card purchases. So potential disadvantages of this choice of the tortoise here, um, you know, continued node sales will dilute future returns due to report reward pool dilution, right? We don't know how many nodes will be sold between now and the end of the year. We know that more will be sold, so we know that the rewards will go down. Uh, so, I mean, again, this is a simple scenario. We can't dynamically plan for that easily. Um, so I didn't do that in this scenario. But also realize that you could also have price appreciation in SPS or vouchers, which could offset that reward pool dilution. Um, additionally, Riff Watcher could sell out quickly and the cards could appreciate in value rather than depreciate, which would mean your $681 in card purchasing power would be diminished because these cards wouldn't be higher priced. Uh, we don't know what the cards are gonna do. If they appreciate rather than depreciate in the near term, well, then that would be bad for the scenario. And also the voucher and or the SPS price could tank following the Rift Watcher release, meaning that the crypto market could crash. You know, vouchers could go down to 40 cents or 20 cents or SPS could down, go down to two cents or a penny. And now those rewards you're getting from the SPS or excuse me, the validator license nodes are not worth nearly as much as this uh, example or scenario represents. So be aware of that as well. So. Those are two scenarios to consider. I give you that data to um, think about, to maybe model and plan your own scenarios to see what, what is the best choice for you. You know, obviously if nodes and a thousand packs are not viable for you, then you'll scale the scenario down to other alternate choices. Like we said, Tower Defense, Chaos Legion, individual cards, SPS, DEC, all are viable options. Um, anytime you're looking at reallocating assets or bringing in new fiat to fund a purchase like Rift Watchers, you should always evaluate your opportunity cost and understand that what are you trying to accomplish? Are you trying to grow your deck? Well, then probably buy Rift Watchers or Chaos Legion is a good way to go. Are you trying to maximize yields? Well, then an exercise like we just walked through is probably one that you want to consider. What we have here is a pack calculator for Rift Watchers. Uh, this was developed by Antonine from YGG. Um, and what I'm doing here, I'm gonna put in the 1150 scenario that we just ran. So if you spent $6,006 in the presale and bought 1,150 packs of Rift Watchers, this is how close of a complete set you would get at diamond level. You would not get a complete set of commons. It'd be 74% of the way to a common complete set. You'd be 99% of the way towards a rare set of, at diamond max level. You would be 80% of the way towards epics and 67% towards legendary uh, at the beginning of the set with no airdrops. So what does this tell you? Is if your target goal is diamond or champion for Rift Watchers, you're gonna have to spend more than $6,006 at pre-sale to get a complete set. Because with this purchase level, you don't have a full set on average for anything regular foil and nowhere near that for gold foil. So keep that in mind. If we shift it to, for example, silver, I think we shift the packs down to like three, 325. Yeah, so 325 packs for max silver gets you a maxed 139% of commons, 129% of rares, 104% of epics, but 69% of legendaries. So probably you could sell your excess commons, rares, and epics for max silver 
to get some of these extra legendaries that you've been missing. But this is a really good calculator um, that, uh, that helps kind of give you an estimate of how many packs you need to get a max level deck for whatever level you're looking for, bronze, silver, gold, diamond, etc. And gives you a little bit of idea of what you need. So even gold level, gold level you probably need like over 900 packs of Rift Watchers to get a max level gold level deck for Rift Watchers. So keep that in mind as well as you're building your deck. If you're looking at purchasing packs or singles, uh, it's going to be expensive is, is all I can tell you. It's going to be expensive. 